So I just finished Saltburn. WTF? And I hope to goodness he was wearing a sock. Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> Saltburn. Okay, this it's been... It's been talked about quite a bit, and I have to say right off the bat, this is not normally the type of film that I would be interested to check out, but something that got me interested was how much talk there was about it and how sort of controversial or divisive it seemed to be. Of course, the critics loved it, naturally. Anyway, I say this as a critic, not an official critic yet, but still, whatever. Anyway, I should have known that I wouldn't be crazy about this movie once I found out who the director was. It's the same director who did Promising Young Woman, which I watched a couple years ago and I absolutely hated that movie. I did not like that movie. I mean, I had certain pros to say about it, the acting and the filmmaking was fine, but just the overall story and the, the very blatant misandry that was on display in that movie, I was not a fan of. And so I hated it. A lot of people were just loving it, thought it was absolutely wonderful. And I'm over here just despising the hell out of it. And so I should have known that I wouldn't care for this movie too much once I found out that it was the same director. Now, I honestly can't really say that I like this more because y'all, <sighs> The characters in this movie were so unlikable. It, it suffered, for me, it suffered from, well, not just the problems that were were going on with Promising Young Woman and that I, I didn't like the main character or pretty much any of the characters, to, to be honest, but it suffers from the, a similar problem that was going on with Bodies, Bodies, Bodies in that while there was this satirical message that was being made, the characters were so unlikable that I just could not enjoy the film. And that's pretty much the same thing that was going on with this movie. And in a lot of ways, I felt like the director wanted to just have as much debauchery and shock value as she was able to do just like somehow that was supposed to elevate this movie it actually made the whole movie just come across as pretty gross to me now the main actor oh my gosh kian Ke Whoa. i know this guy i just forgot his name he's been in a lot of stuff he's a fine actor all of the acting in here was fine technical aspects of this movie just fine but the fundamental story in my opinion is absolute garbage and i hate Hated it. I really think this movie was not something that's up my alley for sure. And the only reason I did, well, one of the other reasons that I did end up watching it was not only because it was just all this talk about it. So I was like, okay. So initially when I read the synopsis for this, I thought it was just going to be like this romance story between these two guys. And I'm not a fan of romance. I, I just thought like sort of an unrequited love sort of story. And I'm like, nah. nah. But then I found out some other stuff was happening. And so I heard comparisons to another movie, which I won't repeat because if I do, that will give away too much if you're interested to watch this. So I watched it for those two reasons, an element other than just a typical sort of romance type of story. And also because there were so many people talking about. And also, I must say, having watched D Movie Man's short video reaction after he saw this, I was like, okay, how bad is this really? It's pretty bad. It's pretty gross. There is so much bodily fluid, you guys. Uh, it's like nasty. And some of the, the places that the director takes this story, just nasty. Some of the scenes, just gross. And I feel like completely unnecessary. It doesn't do anything to elevate the story. It, to me, it just sinks it into the gutter even more. Maybe that was the whole point. Maybe that was her objective. But to me, that doesn't make for a good story. And while the reveal at the end is a bit interesting-ish, I already knew it was coming because of stuff I had already seen mentioned about it. So I'm watching this the whole time knowing what was afoot. The premise, I should have mentioned the premise. The premise is the main character, he's this student at some elite 
college or university or something, it takes place in the UK. And he befriends a really super rich guy. The really super rich guy likes him, brings him home to visit the family to kind of stay for a certain amount of time, whatever, through the summer or something like, I can't remember, whatever, he brings him home. And this family is mega rich, so rich they are completely out of touch with pretty much everything normal. Rosamond Pike, I think that's her name, Rosamond or Rosamond, whatever, she was really, really good in here. I mean, everybody was really good, but her character was interesting because she was equal parts ridiculous and sympathetic. She was ridiculous in that she was completely not in tune with reality. She <laughs> was this line she said. I it was so funny to me. I laughed out loud and I wrote it down. She's, <laughs> she's talking with the main character and she says to him, you know, I was a lesbian for a while. <laughs> But it was all just too wet for me in the end. Men are so lovely and dry. <laughs> what? And then also her character, in the midst of all this chaos and horrific stuff that has happened to the family, she's all worried about, well, come on, darling, it's almost lunch. While there is a death that has happened, a significant death that has happened, and she's worried about lunch. I mean, I guess I could see that part of it is that she wants to keep some semblance of normalcy going in her life. I've experienced a bit of that myself. There was um, an incident one time in our family, and it was quite emotional. And one of my cousins, when it was pretty much over, she was like, let's play Boggle. You know, that was the last thing anybody wanted to do, but she was trying to cling to this feeling of normalcy. And to her, that was normal. I guess in a way I sort of related to what this character in, in the movie was um, going through or that sentiment, I guess, but it just was so glaring and ridiculous. And the main character, we see quite a bit more of him than we really Really should see. In all honesty, I do feel like a, a lot of the nudity and certain scenes that we see in a whole bunch of films, it's completely unnecessary. It's just gratuitous. And I'm not the biggest fan of stuff like that. Just like I wasn't super crazy about the overexposure that we got to this actor. He had no shame at all. <laughs> and, um, there was a scene that happened with him and I was very grossed out by it, which I think was the intention. But the main thing that I was thinking of was, oh, please, please, please let him be wearing a sock. <laughs> you will know what I'm talking about when you watch it. So yeah, there is something interesting about his acting other, you know, besides the whole overexposure to his body parts, he does have a very interesting way of carrying himself. He always kind of looks like he doesn't know how to hold himself. Or he doesn't know how to posture himself. This has been a thing that has been sort of a constant throughout all of the movies that I've seen him in. And I don't know if it's just because he's playing the same type of character or this is just him. He just has this presence in front of the camera. So I don't know, it, it is certainly something that stuck out to me. His character does stuff that you could say it makes no sense, though obviously by the time it has come to the end, it makes a bit more sense, but still some of the stuff he did uh, was like, that's just, that's just nonsensical and stupid. And also there were some other things that, well, there was a specific thing that happened right at the very end that I just don't think it could have transpired without raising eyebrows. I'm not going to get specific because I do want to keep it as mysterious as possible, but I had a bit of an issue with that because this particular thing that's happening, it should have been carried out in a different way because otherwise it's just immediately suspicious. And so that felt like besides the ridiculousness of the story and the unlikable characters, that was one thing that definitely stood out to me as a kind of an issue in the writing. But I guess in the face of the whole movie, that's really a very minor issue. It was just one incident. I mean, well, there are so many incidents. What I mean is that was one incident of a weakness in the writing. One of the characters who played in here, he feels like he's starting to become a um, Ana de Armas type character or Jennifer Lawrence type character where we're seeing him a bit too much and I'm getting a bit tired of him now. In this one year, I think I've seen him already in three or four different movies. It feels like there's a bit of overexposure to him. He's a fine actor. He's the dude who played in Grand 
Gran Turismo, the main character. He's a Brit, but in this movie he's playing an American, and I did spot a weakness with his performance, not necessarily his acting, but his grasp on the American dialect is not solid because I could tell, I already knew he was an American, but there are other Brits that I, or Australians or whatever, that I know they're not American, but they do such an excellent job at mimicking the American dialect that, you know, you forget it, right? This guy, no, pretty much the whole time he talked, there were elements of his natural accent that slipped into the words and only someone who is American could latch on to stuff like that. I imagine it would be the same sort of thing as like an American trying to come and mimic a British person. Maybe to us, it sounds great, but to someone in the UK, you can immediately tell this, no, they don't have the firm grasp on this that they need. So I'm not sure about that casting. I almost kind of feel like he should have had a little bit more dialect training or they should have gotten somebody else, but Anyway, I don't know. The dialogue in here was kind of comedic at times. Some of the situations were a bit comedic. It's like a black comedy in some ways, but there's really nothing about this movie that redeems itself to me. This will go down as probably one of the most unlikable movies for me of 2023. I don't know if it's going to go in my top 10 list of most of worst movies. If it is included in that list, it will just be the fact that the characters are so despicable and disgusting that I cannot find much positive stuff to say about it. So um, yeah, that's Saltburn. I think that's about it. I can't think of anything else to, to add. So I guess I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. If you guys have seen it, what'd you think? And if you haven't seen it yet and you plan to watch it, curious to hear your thoughts. Okay, I think that's it for now, y'all. Adios. Adios.